let's crack on. Well, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever in the world you are, whatever the temperature is outside, this is a special Ivers 2024 announcement. We have the winners of the qualifier competition. So we're going to reveal the finalists who are going to be at Tableau Conference in San Diego at the end of April to compete for the Ivers crown. I'm delighted to be here. I'm Andy Cotgreave, evangelist at Tableau, co-host of Ivers, and I'm joined by another familiar face, Archana Ganeshalingam. Hi, Archana. Thanks, Andy. I'm super thrilled to be back presenting I Am Viz again. It's a staple of the Tableau conference schedule. Day to day, though, I'm a program manager for the solution engineering team, helping arguably the best team at Tableau scale their work and help even more customers see and understand their data. Yeah, brilliant. Well, this year, the topic for I Am Viz was love. Oh, what a great topic. I loved seeing all the entries we saw people choose themes of health and well-being, their love of music, their love of hobby, friends, family. We challenged you, the data fam, to viz what you loved and you did it in spades. We had an amazing 196 entries. One thing that I'm particularly pleased about this year, and so I want to thank everybody for, is that 60% of the entrants were from first timers. So thank you, everybody. Congratulations to all of you. I'd have you all on the stage at Iron Viz Final, but I'm told we don't have the budget for that. So thank you and congratulations. Archana, hey, do you want to tell us about the prizes this year and how we're going to do the announcements today? Yeah, today we'll be announcing the top 10 scoring visas from the qualifier and then out of those, which three will be battling it out live on stage in San Diego at TC. So what do they win? So our top 10 qualifiers will, of course, earn the glory and the pride of being an Iron Viz finalist, as well as bagging themselves some awesome Tableau swag. But as for our top three, they are going to be competing for the largest cash prize we've ever had in IMVIS history. They will be competing for a total prize pot worth $15,000, um, as well as $10,000 to donate for a charity or nonprofit of their choice. Well, that sounds absolutely amazing. I mean, it's, it's a massive prize. Um, we're going to get to this imminently, Archana, but one last thing. How do we judge the entries to get this top 10? So as always, each entry is going to be judged across three criteria, analysis, design, and storytelling. So first, I want to thank all of our community judges who went through the hundreds of entries to select today's top 10. It can't have been easy. And later, we'll be joined by some of the judges who will be sharing their experiences being on the other side of the panel. So without further ado, should we get to our top 10? I am ready. I hope everybody in the attending is ready so we want to see emojis we want to see chat reactions to celebrate them so we're going to go from number 10 oh i've just there's, there was some more of the qualified judges it's hard doing all these slides uh, <laughs> it's time for results so we're going to show go from number 10 to number three in no particular order uh so the top 10 finalists starting at number 10 are oh, the number 10 at number 10, we have Paris Bike Lovers from Marianne Juvet. I really hope I got your name pronunciation right. Um, so let's talk about Marianne's viz. So the first half of this viz teaches us about how cycling has become more popular and safer in recent years, thanks to Paris's city bike plan to create new bike lanes, add bike parking and increase safety at intersections. It's a lot of data packed into really succinct summaries and simple visualizations. So anyone can take a look at this viz. You don't have to be a data expert um, and immediately understand what's going on. The second half of this viz is much more interactive. You're able to use toggles um, to pick your requirements. And then Marion actually suggests a bike to meet your needs. This viz only makes me wish London was also making steps to become safer for cyclists so that I could actually take Marion up on her recommendation for my own bike. Well done, Marion. <laughs> yeah, congratulations. Well, okay, from number 10, we go to number nine. And number nine is a topic that I love dearly as well. Number nine winner is Michelle Freeman with Enough Bookshelves, my family's love of books. Uh, I too love books and have been collecting data about the books I re I read for the last 10 years. Uh, so I was delighted to see Michelle tackle uh, this product too. Oh, I'm loving all the emojis flying across my screen on top of my script. Um, 
I was guaranteed to love this anyway, but the analysis of her family's books is really, really enjoyable because not only is it about which books she has and her family has and read, it's also about where are they in the house? And if you are a prolific reader, that is a real challenge of many of us face. Where do you put these blooming things? What type of books do we read? Do they read? Um, even what awards have been won and much, much more. I really like and we're going to see this a lot in this top 10, that the presentation is really simple. But good, good standard, good basic, but basic chart types, but designed and presented with a really crisp and powerful story. So congratulations, Michelle. Over to you, Archana. Next up at number eight, we have from Emily de Padura, Love Across the Eras. Now, Emily's Viz is close to my heart as a Swifty. It's given me a crash course before I head off to see the Eras tour in London later in the summer. Um, this Viz is literally analyzing the themes of love and heartbreak in Taylor's songs. And you can see the love poured into this passion project by Emily, where tooltips hide Easter eggs about Taylor, her discography, and even things like Emily's favorite lyrics. It's maybe one of the few times where we can allow 10 colors on a Viz, this one here, um, as any fan will know what the colours mean in a Sankey circle. Uh, what do the colours mean, Archana? <laughs> I'll catch you up, Andy. They are the <laughs> colours representing each album. <clears throat> so okay. It, it's one where we can be a little more forgiving about 10 and well, one that, of this. Well, that, well that's, that's, that, 10's all right. I, I only know the album 1989, so I recognise that one. And uh, well, you, you think this is a Sankey <laughs> circle chart, do you? That's the name I'm giving it. I know you right. said chord diagram, but vote in the chat <laughs> yeah it, it, yeah so do tell us because this this chart on screen right now seems to be a hybrid between sankey chart and a chord diagram and archana and i were unsure what is it is it a new chart type so uh a cordy says my cordy. brilliance there you go <laughs> oh, uh, maybe just the taylor swifty chart uh any other names for that chart let us know um brilliant well congratulations and uh let's move on to number seven this one at number seven is uh, A Key to My Heart by Stephen Detzel. Uh, this, <laughs> this, this is great, right? I seem to be getting the quirky data sets. No, I said quirky because this data set is all about quirky keyboards. Do you see what I did there, Real China? <laughs> uh, right, anyway, let's talk about the Viz and not my script. Um, this Viz, what, what Stephen's done here is take some love letters that GPT or some generative AI uh, created and mapped the dance that your fingers do as you play across the keyboard when you type these letters. Uh, and you can select QWERTY keyboards or Dvorak or any of the other uh, keyboards that other people use. And, you know, this is this is just one of my favourite things about IronVis because I'd never have thought of this data set. I, well, you know, what, what, I love the passion that drives people to find these data sets, have these creative ideas, and then... You know, crazily, give me give me a story that I lost about twenty minutes exploring. Um, you know, I think fantastic again, crisp design, beautiful presentation. So, congratulations to Stephen. Archana. Next up at number six, we have Nicole Klassen with a Madman in a Box: My Journey with the Doctor. Just like the TV show that Nicole's Viz is based on, which is Doctor Who, for those of you that don't know. This viz is super intricate and incredibly layered. However, it never once feels overwhelming because we only ever see one viz on screen at a time, thanks to the horizontal layout Nicole has chosen to use, along with um, the chapters that reveal each chart one at a time. I also think she doesn't ever use the same chart type twice in this viz, which is really cool as well. Um, in particular, the TARDIS dot plot is just such a delightful little treat among all the variety of visualization types. And Nicole's Viz has definitely reminded me of the love I have for the show. And I'm, just got me super excited again for the upcoming season in the spring. Do you think I'm, I, can, I might alienate my entire audience against me by saying I'm not a fan of Doctor Who? <sighs> uh oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> I feel uh, like the, uh, the Venn diagram of Doctor Who fans and Data fans is a is is an almost circle. I know, Desiree, please forgive me, Mark Bradbourne. Hey, but yeah, minus five thousand followers to all my. I've already seen a comment shopping. about how you've been outed as a non Swifty. So uh, <laughs> oh. I, I don't know if I would check no. your Twitter mentions after uh, this. Uh, 
it's not that I'm a non Swifty. It's just I only ever devoted myself to one album. I, I think she's absolutely amazing, but there's only enough time in my life for Swift <laughs> compared to everybody else. Hey, go and listen to The Last Dinner Party, by the way. They are my hottest new band, British band of five incredibly talented female singers. Check them out. Anyway, uh, we're not here to bother. Let's talk about music. Let's carry on. Uh, talking of uh, music and things, it's like uh, it was a segue. Number five is. There's no business like show business from Lisa Rapp. Congratulations, Lisa, from Germany. What Lisa did was take a look at Broadway and, um, you know, trends over time of what's going on there. Now, the first thing I love about this is at the bottom, you have a navigation chart, right? So this taxi is going to move along the sky, the city, the the skyline uh, as you go through the different pages that she's built to tell the story. But... This chart, it's set. Uh, these bars, this is a hidden Easter egg chart um, that has data about Broadway <coughs> concealed in it. <coughs> Excuse me. I love seeing these Easter egg small hidden charts because it shows that the people building charts, visits like this, are in control of Tableau. They're thinking about that design and they're really focusing on attention to detail. Um, I learned a huge amount about the life cycle of Broadway theatre. Um, you know, and the it's just full of small details. I think the taxi navigation movement in particular is a genius idea. So there you go. I'll hand it over to Archana and mute myself while I cough. <laughs> Next up, we have An Ode to Chilean Wine by Diego Parker. Nope, oh, sorry. <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> this is a sophisticated look at Chilean wine and for me, it highlights the best of Tableau's out-of-the-box mapping capabilities. Um, as someone who's nowhere near a sommelier level, um, I especially love the highlight actions that Diego has taken the consideration, time, and effort to set up in the middle section of his viz so that you're never lost as to which part of the country the viz are referencing because when you hover, it will highlight it over on the map. So that was a, a really nice touch. So nothing to whine about here. <laughs> Mm. And it's excellent. Pointed at yeah, me. I, I, yeah, I, yeah. I was just, I, I was just rendered silent by that pun. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, so there you go. That was number ten to number three. Congratulations to all our runners up. Look, really, really fantastic. In a few minutes, we'll be announcing the top three. You get to join our Chana and I on stage in San Diego. Uh, before we do, oh, we're going to tease you all a little bit and have a quick chat with three of our incredible qualified judges who we're very grateful for so welcome chris bells and lisa uh say hello and i um yeah let's have a quick chat with you so lisa welcome back to the another new iron viz role that you've taken uh you know you've been a participant a finalist you were a judge in 2022 and now you've judged the 20 the qualifiers uh section so what was your experience like looking through all these entries uh yeah thanks for having me it was great uh, i really love the open-ended themes like love because people can pretty much visit anything they want so we get lots of different topics and i think it leads to some really cool passion projects coming through like there were visits i feel like i could just feel the passion and excitement that the author had mm. about the topic and that was evident that folks were putting a lot of themselves you know into their work um, so that was a really wonderful piece of the experience, but I'd be lying if I didn't say it was also a little bit stressful. Uh, I thought being on this side would be a lot easier, but I was wrong about that. Um, I think because there was so much passion behind the visits, and as we've seen so far, the caliber of the visits was just so high. I felt like I was splitting hairs on a lot of these. You know, everyone really just brought their A game and it was difficult to score them mm. when they were all just so... Yeah unique and beautiful yeah. so i enjoyed exploring all the topics and seeing you know what the data fam loves but i also had a little bit of stress about it as well well we're sorry you went through a little bit of stress yeah. but i think that that, that yeah. is a common that's, that's not an uncommon experience it is you know it's it's a burden of responsibility which we're grateful you all take up my yeah. over to you uh, yeah, thank you, Lisa. Um, Vels, was there anything across the visas that you reviewed that you saw as a common theme this year or any kind of design trends that you've noticed? Uh, yes. Uh, like, uh, first of all, uh, congratulations to all the uh, top 10 finalists. 
uh, and also to the participants who have uh, done to this contest. A uh, couple of things I really liked as part of the judging process. Uh, one of the visas is Made in Lagos, uh, an album by Wizkid, uh, which is a modern day Afrobeat music, uh, very well designed by Zainab, uh, beautifully designed, uh, which had a theme of giving enough white spaces with black and white, uh, beautifully mm -hmm. done. So I, I really like that uh, design, uh, art of storytelling. I also like the Grand Slam 2023 by Kim Tricker, uh, where he compared uh, men's versus women's single comparison of Grand Slam. Uh, super cool way of telling the story uh, with simple charts, with adding little innovation to it. Uh, it reminded me of 2020 Some Vision uh, by Drew Puppet, uh, mental health versus physical health comparison. So these two really uh, uh, felt uh, unique and a common theme, uh, a trend that has been following uh, across over the years. Thank you for that. And I think that's maybe the third or fourth time we've mentioned simple charts. It seems to be simple is, is key this year. So if you're one of the finalists listening, maybe take that into consideration in San Diego as well. Over to you, uh, Andy. Yeah. And of course, <clears throat> the exception that proves the rule is the uh, Cordy diagram, <clears throat> which we have seen. Uh, OK, so uh, Chris, what about you? What, what impressed you and did you see any... Any technical tricks in Tableau you've perhaps not seen before? Um, first of all, I want to thank everybody for, you know, submitting their entries and having the thought process in doing so. Uh, I always find this very difficult to try to centralize, even though love is a great theme, to centralize and focus on one thing and translate that into a visualization or a combination of visualizations. Um, I was just enamored by the use of some of the more simplistic charts being able to use sliders to do a bunch of things, heat maps, density charts, uh, being able to deal with the colors. You know, I deal with a lot of, you know, people who might be colorblind, being able to look at some of these uh, visualizations and have the consideration to have that translate to anybody who may be dealing with any color uh, deficiencies as their, you know, as part of their, uh, their story. Um, that is amazing. Um, I was just really in awe of the passion of mm -hmm. each of these businesses, and I wanted to judge them uh, with that same passion. They brought it, so I need to bring it just as much as they brought it in judging it. And that was one of the things that I made sure that I tried to do every time I looked at a biz. Amazing. Thank you. Thank you. I love that judging is taken as such a serious and like honorable role. You really treat it with the with the respect that that it deserves. Yeah. Um, and mm. on that, uh, so you're always judging on three criteria, Lisa, analysis, design and storytelling. Um, is there any one particular one that you particularly enjoy judging? I've said particularly too many times now. <laughs> Well, I particularly love judging uh, storytelling. <laughs> I think I'm a sucker for a good story because I feel like that's really what brings the data and the insights to life. Right? Mm -hmm. Like when there's a good story behind the numbers and the data, I find myself going through a viz and either laughing or feeling happy or even feeling sad or upset. And those I feel like are the vizs that I really remember. They're the ones that made me feel something and have brought the data and numbers to life. I also think it's kind of the hardest one of the three criteria to, to do well. But when the author does do it well, I feel like it takes kind of the charts and numbers from just looking nice to being something that can be really impactful and resonate with the audience. So uh, I love seeing the stories that people find in the data and then tell us through their visits. Yeah, I, I totally relate to that, Lisa. You know, the, the QWERTY keyboard one. Yeah, <laughs> it's like, exactly. I, I'm, I'm not really interested in that, but... Well, I, but it turns out I was after 15, 20 minutes looking at it. So I totally agree. Uh, right. I'll give you all a chance uh, actually now to as a th one way of saying thank you is to tell us where can we find you all on social media? You know, what is the prime way for us to contact you to follow what you're doing? So I'll start with Chris. Uh, tell everybody where, where we can find your stuff. Well, uh, I am actually in the process of uploading a lot of business starting this year. I've been really kind of working in the silo because a lot of the stuff that I do is for, you know, sensitive data and customers. But I have done taken the uh, responsibility of basically cleansing that data. So I'll be uploading a lot more on public, Temple Public. On LinkedIn, you can find me at Chris Williams uh, PDX at LinkedIn. I'll paste it in the chat here. And you do that, yes. Uh, and that'll be yeah. fun. Uh, I look forward to just being 
you know, talking with all the data fam. This is a, this is a passion of mine. So I'm really excited to be a part of it. So thank you. All right. That's great. And uh, Lisa, how about you? Uh, yeah, you can find me on Tableau Public under Lisa Trescott, same on Twitter or X. Um, and I'm also on LinkedIn, all just at Lisa Trescott. Um, and yeah, thank you so much for having me and including me in this. It was a great experience. And I and thank you to everyone who submitted a vids. All right. Amazing. Thank you, Lisa. And finally, Vals, where can we find you? Sure. Uh, you can find me on Twitter, uh, RC Vales. Uh, you can find me on LinkedIn, Raj Vales, Silvaraj Ganesan. You can find me on uh, Tableau Public. Uh, with the same name. You can also find me on my blog, which is called Crackerson. I'll share the link on the chat. Uh, uh, thank you for all everyone who participated in this. Uh, this. Amazing. Yeah, and feel free to put your link in chat. Well, there you go. It's 5.21 here in the UK. That means it must be time to announce the three finalists. Are you ready for this, Archana? Yes, let's do it. Here we go. Let, yes, do it. Drum rolls, <laughs> drama, tension. Here we go. Our first finalist is Pata Gagova with What Is Not Love. Woo! So, uh, with... <laughs> yeah, let's give it a moment. <laughs> um, so let me tell you a little bit about Pata as well. So Pata is originally from Slovakia, but has been living in beautiful Prague for the last three years. Her Tableau journey took off in March 2020 when she started playing around with Tableau after her former boss wanted a more modern tool for slick reports and complex calculations. As a bit of a challenge to herself, she started sharing her visits on Tableau Public, and that's how she got pub, um, plugged into the Tableau community. She now co-leads the Prague Tableau user group, spread, spreading Tableau's reach here in EMEA. Yeah, amazing. Well, congratulations, Pata. So this is your, this is her debut viz for Iron Viz. That's amazing. Um, so when she learned, uh, yeah, so when she learned the theme was love, she wanted to make something that clicks with lots of people, took a twist. Instead of something that focuses on love itself, she was looking at the things that are not love. Uh, this viz is a serious topic, but it's really things, something she wanted to resonate with people um, and send out a message that no matter what life throws your way, there's always help available. Um, so, yeah, really great Ironviz entry. Tons of basic charts layered inside an amazingly designed story that is, you know, I particularly like the, the sketchy look. Um, really makes it inviting to come in, even though the topic's quite difficult. It's just a really, really mature uh, and great design style. So well done, Pata. What did you think, Archana? Yeah. Completely agree. I think it makes a really tough topic uh, much more approachable. And in particular, the analysis here um, was really interesting for me. One of the standouts was um, one of the visits that shows um, how different the perception of domestic violence actually varies between women who have and haven't experienced it themselves, which kind of highlighted just how isolating the experience can be. Um, and how those that are fortunate enough to never have experienced abuse live in somewhat, somewhat of a sheltered bubble. Um, mm. It's a really serious topic, but I think handled with so much grace. So well done, yeah. Peter. Yeah, congratulations. Look forward to seeing you in San Diego. Well, number two of our three goes to Jessica Moon from Atlanta, USA with Heart of Dixie. So Jessica is from and lives in Huntsville, Alabama. Did you know that is number one in the News and World Report's best places to live for families? I certainly did not, but that's what uh, Jessica tells us. She's been working with Tableau for nine years, so that's a, that's a long time um, and amazing. And we can see the, see the output now. She's been honing her skills over the last five years and really getting involved in community projects. And that, she, uh, that has incredibly uh, in, improved her Tableau and design skills. Uh, so... Archana, oh, tell us about the viz. Yeah, her viz was inspired by um, her love for the TV series Heart of Dixie, um, which she recently rewatched more closely a second time with ample note taking to capture the data herself. So things like medical cases, locations featured in the fictional town of Bluebell, um, romances, events that capture the over the top quirky charm of this show. So I haven't watched this one. So this was just nice to like build context and learn about a new TV show that's certainly going to make it onto my list. Um, how about you, Andy? What did you think? 
Yeah, well, I see Michelle Freeman has said uh, the the Viz inspired her to watch all of uh, all of the show. So that surely is a resounding success. Again, I really love what's going on here. Um, in this case, there are more advanced charts. We have glyphs, which are uh, well explained. And we have chord diagrams here. I really like the way these chord diagrams are imp implemented because the selection has already been made. So that takes a huge amount of confusion away from the user. And then there's even really subtle things. So like this bit of text actually has a data-driven line chart underneath it, which is about the text. And again, it's these little details that are exceptional. Final one I point out is that the navigation through the Viz is um, indicated by a sunflower trail. So wonderful, wonderful ideas and a great story. Congratulations. Seems to be a lot more part of Dixie fans um, in the chat than Doctor Who wants. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I think, that I, I mean, yes. yes. <laughs> it's a, it's I've a, never a, seen Heart of Dixie, but I'm sure that they're, they're, they're probably chosen the right chart. They're the right chart. <laughs> All right, <laughs> that's another 5,000 <laughs> followers I just lost. Archana, it's time for you. Yes, our third oh. and final finalist is Chris Westlake with Love for Food, Hunger for Change. Chris grew up in the south of England, but has lived in Edinburgh, Scotland for the last eight years. He started using Tableau back in 2018 during student placement and in 2019 was actually part of the very first cohort of student ambassadors um, where you share the power of Tableau with other students and kind of evangelize it in the academic space. After graduating, he set about to find a job with just one criteria that he could use Tableau all day, every day. That sounds like a perfect job. Uh, yeah, so this was uh, Chris's fifth time entering Ironviz. And uh, the hard work has paid off. This is his favorite topic. And he's always had a passion for three things, food, helping people who were less fortunate than him, and for data. So a love for food was a great theme that gave him a chance to combine all of the things. What he said to us was, I love food, but I hate that not everybody in the world has enough of it. By shining a light on the important issues of global hunger, I believe we can make it a thing of the past. I love food too. Um, what I like about this, I think I think the tree maps are a really nice way of uh, showing the food group types in, in any given recipe. Very clever and attractive design. But that leads you into the story as it gets a bit more uh, serious about the consequences of hunger. So uh, great work. Yeah, I really liked Chris's choice of visualizations. It was shocking to learn how much the pandemic had undone a lot of the yeah. progress that had been made in terms of um, dealing and addressing undernourishment across the world. However, Chris ends on a really hopeful note, delving deeper into country level data to highlight the countries that have been able to, con um, to continue to make significant progress despite the challenges that the pandemic has thrown our way. So well yeah, done, Chris. Amazing. Well done to yeah. all of our finals. Yeah, amazing. And uh, I'm seeing some love for tree maps in chat as well. I I, I love tree maps. I'm gonna, we should all do a few more tree maps. They seem to have died off a little bit so more tree maps well there you go congratulations to every single top 10 winner special congratulations of course to our three finalists but remember everybody who entered win or learn you can't lose um, and with that what happens next is well we'll be doing a bunch of stuff on social media as we build up to the final itself but if you want to see the live showdown it's going to be between april the 29th and may the 21st in San Diego. We are going back to California. Registration is not open yet. It is nearly open. Uh, if you scan this QR code, you can get uh, sign up to be the first to know when registration launches. And we'll be showing details of cost and those gnarly details, uh, as well as keynote speakers and sessions and more. That's right, Andy. And we're also excited to share that the call for participation at conference Ooh. will open next next week so you've got the weekend to start thinking up your ideas for sessions and um, yeah. stay tuned more <clears throat> detail coming soon on our social channels yes it's going i'm looking forward to what everybody has to say so with that thank you for everybody who signed in today uh thank you for joining us thank you to our guest judges for sharing your experience with us today yeah, yeah, and keep the conversation yeah. going. Let us know what you think on socials using the hashtag IamViz. Until then, we'll see you at Tableau Conference in just a few months. Farewell and happy vising. Bye-bye.
Bye, everybody.